Uh, dear friends from afar, uh, has the pandemic uh, not uh, prevented us uh, from meeting? My interest in the summit, uh, which is such a generous topic, the role of youth in peacemaking, would have been not entirely in being a keynote speaker, but in listening uh, to the opinions of the young participants. That is because uh, the world they will be building will also be the world in which my own children and grandchildren will be living. In over the four decades, I spent uh, as a university professor, as I uh, grew older and as times changed, I struggled to understand what my students were thinking. All of them of the same age, 18, 19 years old. I do not know how much today's youth would be interested in experiences such as mine. A man uh, who as a child uh, witnessed the death and mutilation of people during the Second World War, whose uh, youth uh, was spent under a criminal dictatorship that could uh, at any time send you to prison, forced labor camps and, or outright uh, deport you for political reasons. And uh, who in maturity took part in a peaceful revolt that was bloody repressed by the armed forces in Romania in December 1989. And ultimately one who dedicated his life to promoting peace and understanding worldwide. All these events of contemporary history might seem to today's youngsters a story of long ago, not understanding for today's world, which is confronted with other challenges. The pandemic affected young and old people alike and brought to the fore two fundamental values, life and freedom, which we tend to remember once lost. It is the same with uh, health care. I appreciate the programmatic documents promoted by the United Nations organizations such as uh, the Agenda 2030, but uh, I am not sure how convincing they can be for today's use, as they are elaborated by experts who were not faced with the horrors of war, hunger, refuge, or with the inferno prison and concentration camps. In uh, order to reach a consensus to qualify war as a crime against humanity, which annuls one rise to life, one needs a profound change in societal conscience regarding violence in interhuman relations. The dominance of violence is deeply rooted in collective psychology. The history of mankind from the earliest times glorified war heroes instead of peace heroes. In this condition, it is hard to believe that my plea for a culture of peace can be successful. I think that the isolation imposed by the pandemic provided uh, uh, unhoped for occasion to revisit literary masterpieces that address in the manner of the artistic genius mind both sense and reason. And uh, I say this because I am convinced that the power of books is greater than that of political speech. It was uh, during the time that I reread two novels, uh, novels that uh, have influenced my youth, War and Peace and The Magic Mountain. Tolstoy sends the reader to the time of the Napoleonic Wars, which involved the whole of Europe in the beginning of the 19th century, while Thomas Mann focuses on the First World War at the beginning of the 20s. Throughout the, the history of mankind, the first victim of wars, be it the world wars, European wars, the regional, interstate, or civil wars, caused by the rural desire for power, are the young. It is not easy to forget the harrowing scene in War and Peace, when Napoleon was inspecting the sinister post-battle landscape of the Pratzen Hills, strewn with the bodies of the dead 
and uh, owned with a young and moribund Prince Bolkonski. Having someone uh, might bring him back to the life, which uh, having now understood it differently, seemed so wonderful in comparison. Uh, just as harrowing as the final chapters of the Magic Mountain, where a regiment of student volunteers must decide the fate of the attack of the trenches and the burning villages, 3,000 strong Thomas Mann writers saw that only 2,000 after heavy losses be left standing to salute uh, victory through a heartfelt hooray without sparing those for those who in falling will have been left behind. I believe uh, this uh, sins should be ingrained into the memory of all those who plan for war, suffering and bloodshed. In 1943, in the midst of World War II, the most terrible military confrontation in history, the German writer Hermann Hesse published a book that describes a peaceful world in which armed confrontation uh, are mere memory. The Glass Big Bame, for which Hermann Hesse received the Nobel Prize for Literature at the end of the war in 1946, proposed a model of a society founded on culture and not on violence and glorifies the valences of cultural dialogue in which uh, uh, the author argues the differences in culture, education, talent and individually are not a reason to give up from understanding one another. Unlike uh, the political utopias uh, of uh, Thomas More or Campanella, Hesse's novel does not suggest an isolation from but on the contrary, rather an involvement in the life of the world, beyond the peaceful borders of imaginary Castalia, with the danger of self-sufficiency lurking from behind. We might ask ourselves, why, after the spectacular development of intercultural dialogue during the last decades, humankind is presently facing so many challenges, freezing adversities, and the spiral of violence. In my opinion, the culture of peace is something more than mere intercultural dialogue, and its construction requires more time and more perseverance. It is about uh, a lifelong learning process from early childhood until old age. We cannot neglect the fact that the culture of peace cannot be separate from a new culture of democracy and even from a new culture of the market economy. The culture of peace is also difficult to build because in the late 20th and early 21st century, the need for education was replaced by the need for entertainment, as uh, entertainment brings money, while education does not. Mass killings, genocide, Rape, destructions are breaking news, while humanitarian action never are. If this reality will not change, it might be that some of the children now raised and educated in the spirit of violence will migrate even without any ideological or well, religious motivation to those spaces that have become a kind of uh, reservation where manhunts and uh, killing and torturing people are allowed, encouraged, praised and made popular. The traders in violent images are just as responsible as the weapons traders, because both their motivations are the same, profit and money. I think that uh, when we blame religions for the current open conflict and for all the frozen conflict, we should remember before condemning them for the evils committed in their name, that they too preach peace and not war. In the past they point to 
is to love your neighbor and not kill or oppress them. Even if in a, the long history of mankind, one marked by extreme violence, this hey, remained in merely a dream, one must not lose hope. Maybe a new generation will turn it into reality. In order for this to happen, we, the elders, as a representative of the academic milieu or as experienced professionals in any field of activity, must perform an exercise in self-knowledge in order to identify those values that help us in fighting evil and discovering good. We have the duty to help the young discover for themselves the values of humanity and to make them their own in order to build themselves ideals that can converge towards the greater good. Thank you.